It's Kitty Gang Show on Scarbox Nation TV. It's the Kitty Gang Show on Scarbox Nation TV. And we're coming to you live from CB Giddy. It's the Giddy Gang Show. Giddy Gang Show. 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 It's the Giddy Gang Show on Cigar Box Nation TV. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Giddy Gang Show. Uh, as you'll probably realize pretty darn quick, uh, Mr. Nick Lanciano is out this week. This uh, He's down at some sort of gaming convention in the Boston area. So uh, I'm here behind the control desk with a little help from my panda friend, uh, above whom I'm, I'm floating, uh, uh, Danny Woodman and Mr. Glenn Watt over there on the Juke Shack stage. I'll be moving back and forth. Uh, I imagine throughout this, I uh, just got to mash some buttons. Uh, hopefully, um, you got it pulled up on the iPad there, Glenn. Got it on the iPad. We got people. Yep. Uh, got people saying things and liking things, so it's a good, it's a good day. Good. The yes. liking and the saying. We approve of both of those. I, uh, I'm a little rusty on mashing these buttons. I ain't gonna lie. So, um, if there's a big problem that you notice, audio-wise, video-wise. Uh, let let us know and can't promise anything, but we'll try to get it sorted out. Um, so we've got a few things on the docket for you today. Um, as I mentioned, Nick is away. I'm going to be showing off the finished version of that cigar box ukulele uh, that I've been working on from the, the kit prototype. I did a short live broadcast here to the Nation page on Facebook yesterday. Uh, it is now finished and strung up, so I'm going to be showing that off. Uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about GDAE tuning, mandolin style tuning. Got a whole range of instruments over there. Uh, also, uh, the new mandolin Irish Celtic uh, songbook, tablature songbook I've been working on. I've got a sample from that that I'm going to show you and then play on most of these instruments that I've got lined up here to show you how learning one thing, how to read and play GDAE uh, tablature and chords lets you play multiple instruments. We've got videos from Janice Wilson Hughes, J Dub, uh, as well as Vern and Pornis Studios again this week. Uh, we've got Watt Corner. Um, and just to start off with a, a little announcement uh, this will be Glenn Watt's last Giddy Gang show, last Watt Corner, and last day here at CB Giddy. Uh, despite previous rumors, he is moving on to new and exciting things, and we wish him well. So uh, get your fill of the G-Watt today. This is it, folks. There's not much there. <laughs> get, get, get topped off, by yeah. God, because here we go. Um, and also, we're going to be talking a little bit about the Giddy Gang show and the future of it. Uh, what you'd like to see more of, maybe format change, uh, scheduling differences, any. So be thinking about that. Uh, who we got out there so far, Glenn? We got William Lute, Michael Capato, Martin Tauber, Del Puckett, Dave, G Damon Park. I'm going to keep going because I love it. Eric Denton, Su Mulligan yeah, Stu, going. Messias. Wait, well, Mul Mulligan Stu, Sue, Messias. I got to get hey, it. It's, it's your last show. Do what you want. I'm going to get it. Aaron CBG, Jimbo Burt, Roll Time, Tom Petri. One more. Who do we got? Joe Caruso from O Canada. And Tom Schaefer, stick around. I got you in Watt Corner a little bit later. Tom Schaefer in Watt Corner. Yeah, buddy. Hey. Watt Corner is going to be extra special today because I panickedly got all these photos mashed in uh, just a few moments ago. We're going to see how that all works. Excuse me. Um, so first, I think I'm going to come up to the uh, stage, take myself off the uh, take myself off the thing here. Boo. Huzzah! Oh, that's better. I don't like being back there. I ain't gonna lie. It's stressful. It's stressful <laughs> back here, back there. 
Uh, first thing up, cigar box uke. If you tuned in yesterday, my uh, I was out in the shop. Let me bring this audio up a little bit. Why not? It's Friday, right? Yeah, there we go. Sorry to blast anybody out on <laughs> on if they were on earbuds. Uh, I did a short live broadcast yesterday from out in the Giddy Shop, uh, working on this prototype ukulele kit. I got it all put together, strung up. I'll come up for a close up. Yeah, buddy. So this is ukulele, four strings, standard uke tuning, high G C E A, using those sealed gear ukulele tuners up top, nicely situated on there using a CB Giddy uh, headstock drilling template. See? Um, yeah, I got my bridge on there. I've got a little tweaking of my design to do on this tailpiece here. I discovered some things as I went along. Had to get a little bit taller bridge, but uh, still vaguely in tune. And I'm gonna, oops, bag in the way. Sorry. I'm gonna plug it in just, uh, I put a, I glued a piezo, just a basic piezo straight to a jack in there. And I got my little mic modeling amp down here. Let's see? Just give it a little extra. It's got decent acoustic sound though. prototype is successful. As I said, a couple of things need tweaked because of the total length that the strings can reach. I think I'm going to do away with this neck extension tail here. Maybe have a hinge tail piece on here instead that you tie the strings to just to give you a little more working length because I ain't going to lie, it got pretty tight. Trying to tie the knots here in the ends of the strings so they wouldn't pull through to get that knot big enough and not use up too much of the string, it was tricky. It, it was tight. So having it be a kit, I want it to be as easy as possible to assemble. So uh, yeah. But hopefully, assuming I can get the how-to guide written in a timely manner, that'll be a new kit coming down the line at CB Giddy. Speaking of things coming down the line, did you know Mr. Shane Spiel is hitting the road tomorrow? Uh, making the drive up here to New Hampshire. He's going to be staying through uh, next week sometime. We're going to be brainstorming and, and cooking up some cool new fun ideas and such. So uh, has, has he chimed in out there yet today? I haven't seen him yet, but that's... I haven't, well, my it's hard, he's a hard one to keep track of. I ain't going to lie. He's quick. Shane's, oh, moves like, a, moves like a fox, I tell you, right through the... Pew! <laughs> but anyway, yeah, uh, I'm sure we'll, he and I will uh, manage to... Uh, sit down in front of the camera here at least once uh, while he's here and, and maybe do a little picking and grinning and yeah. get Danny on board and just have a good old time. So uh, looking forward to that. Love One it. more thing, still in the uh, Ben Blabber section of the script. That's what it's officially titled. This is where I blab on for an extended period. And, and the more uh, forthright of our viewers say shut up and play something about five minutes in, yeah. Uh, one other thing, if you are a follower of the Friends of CB Giddy group on Facebook, you will know that recently there was some discussion of a new form of tablature. And that was harmonica tab. And I had to say when that question was asked last week, Tyler Jones, I believe, is the Giddy, Giddy gangster who was asking about harmonica tab. I said, no, well, you know, I never really messed around with it or you know don't fully understand how harmonicas work i guess you could ask oh me. i don't either <laughs> I'm, no just idea. I'm just winging it <laughs> um well i did a little bit of studying and figured some things out and it turns out uh oh i'm just gonna walk this up yeah buddy so this is harmonica tablature the numbers on here correspond to the whole numbers on a harmonica. This happens to be my grandpa's 
sea harp. It's a Honer Marine Band, which means it, it has two extra holes up here on the high end. Is that so 12? Can, 12. 12. Mm -hmm. Standard, I guess, is 10 for a diatonic harmonica. Marine Band has 12. So these two higher holes, uh, in my testing of the tablature, it, it uh, you don't have to get up there very often. So not being a harmonica player, this is an Irish song, Jug of Punch. The numbers tell you what hole to, to use. Uh, if there's a minus sign in front of the number, you draw instead of blow. Right? Mm -hmm. So, starting on nine. gives you a, a guideline of where to go. I think my 10 draw is a little flat. Or yeah, something. Something's it, a little it's flat supposed thing. to be an A, but I don't think it's quite there. Anyway, um, that's an old Irish tune, The Jug of Punch, and uh, I'm excited because what I did, you've probably heard me talk about the magical tablature program that I came up with that spits out a lot of this tablature. Well, I tweaked it so that it would output this harmonica tab. And uh, I'm pretty excited about that because all 540 some odd public domain songs that I've tabbed out now, pretty much every one of them can be output for harmonica. So new songbooks are <laughs> a whole new vista of songbookery opened by that. So I'm looking forward to the format that you choose for said books. Not that I'm, I'm not putting you on the spot for any information now, but like, you know, the kind of how it will look and yep. the size and whatnot. It's going to be some good stuff. Well, it'll be similar, you know, the layout, this line of numbers above words, that's the same layout I used for the Kanjo tablature songbooks, because that's one string. Uh, so it'll be built around that and then, you know, consulting with harmonica players to mm -hmm. figure out, like, how would this work best for you when you're playing harmonica? Now, we have to... Uh, um, I forgot what I was going to say. Tablature, especially harmonica tab, is for people who don't know how to play harmonica. If if you already know how to play harmonica, like Danny said, he has no idea, like, trying to no, read this I, tab, like, yeah. if you got the ear and you pick it up, you know, it, so, but tablature like this is to help people who don't play harmonica and don't really have an idea of where to start. That's what these songbooks are going to be for, to get you being able to play some recognizable tunes on a harmonica. So, uh, I love it. Yeah, yeah. I love it. More educational resources. Mm -hmm. Edumacation. Edumacation. Yes, sir. <laughs> on to our next topic, a video but from the, the lady herself there who's busily commenting away. Nice. J-Dub. J-Dub. J-Dub sent us a video showing off her Rod Piso embedded bridge. So good. They're doing a little picking and grinning. Shane's huh? watching. Shane Spiel is <laughs> in the house. Everybody, not yet. Tomorrow evening, he'll be in this house. Right now, he's in his house. <laughs> anyway, I've got to run over there. Hey, we all kind of are color coordinated today, mm -hmm. except for a tan pants guy over tan there. Pants. <laughs> tan pants. Tan pants. <laughs> yep. Um, I'm going to run over and mash the buttons, hopefully do it correctly. It's going to be great. Uh, We'll be back to you in approximately four and a half minutes. Turtle Box Guitars, it's great to see you. Roger Smith, too. J-Dub in the house. <laughs> hey, now. All right. Video. Buttons. Shane sitting in Jiffy Room. Jiffy Room? Yep. It's like a house. All right. There she is on that screen. Now I'm going to mash a button. Look out, people. Hey, you guys. This is Janice Wilson-Hughes, a.k.a. J-Dub. We're here in my Evolution Stoneware Pottery Studio today for a really quick video on rod piezos. Now this is where I make my ceramic slides and tone bars, but today I thought maybe we could talk about amplifying our CBGs. I think that rod piezos provide a really great way to do that, that provide a balance between good tone and ease of install. These are really easy to use and really inexpensive too. One thing that I've done is come up with my own custom bridge and that's what I want to share with you today. 
here's what the finished bridge looks like and here's how it's made. So I used three pieces that I got from the hardware store. I've got an aluminum bar stock that's three quarters inch wide, three sixteenths diameter steel rod, and one eighth inch diameter brass rod. Personally, I cut these down with a pair of bolt cutters and then sand them to make the labor as easy as possible for myself. But you could saw these or use a Dremel cutoff wheel to cut them. From the side here, you can see the flat bar. And then I have two of the steel rods glued onto it with two part epoxy. I drilled a hole in the flat bar. The rod sits right down in between the two steel rods with the wire coming through the hole in the plate. And then the brass rod sits on top of the rod, just a little bit higher than the steel bars. So the strings run across the brass and transfer the vibrations onto the rod, allowing you to amplify your guitar. In my applications, I leave this rod loose and the tension from the strings holds it in place, but you could glue some pieces here on the ends to hold it in place. And you can also file some grooves in your brass rod for your strings to ride across. Now, I've used this style bridge on two of my favorite builds, my ceramic body guitar and my U-Bass, my ukulele bass. So I put together a really quick demo for you of what those sound like. I do recommend that you throw on some headphones or good speakers if you have them around so you can really hear the bass, but I'm gonna pan back and forth between the guitar and the bass in the song so you can kind of hear the tone from each one. It's also a really great idea to use a piezo preamp. You can get those from CB Giddy really affordably and you don't have to build it directly into your guitar. You can build an outboard one that you can use with all your piezo guitars. So I am using one in my video and then I'm running into my Roland Microcube and then I'm just recording straight out of that. So I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you for watching. for watching. I hope this gives you guys some ideas for making a custom bridge to use with your rod piezo. Hope everybody out there has a fantastic day. Thank you, CB Giddy. Love to all you guys. Love to all my Giddy gangsters out there. Bye, y'all. Piezo electric. I think these little guys are a really fantastic way to amplify your Savar... <laughs> Savar Gox guitars. Cigar Box guitars. Love it. That was awesome. Thank mm. you very much, J-Dub, for sending that in. We know that, or you know that we love you, and I just, that you pass on that much knowledge with uh, humility uh, and uh, with kindness is, is always a, it's always a treat to have on this show. I know that. I'm, I'm kind of bumming. I... I didn't have headphones. I couldn't hear the blooper at the end. I'm gonna have to go back and watch that. And it looked, looked funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, as promised now, or as uh, threatened, or however you want to say it, uh, GDAE tuning. You've heard me talking a lot about it. One of the reasons for that is that uh, in other song bookery, I've been diligently engaged lately in converting some of my. I'll bring this closer. Some of my Irish and Celtic tab for, from three string cigar box guitar to mandolin. So here's one sample of that. Blown up nice and big. It's that same tune that I was trying out on the uh, harmonica a moment ago. Jug a punch.
good old Irish drinking song. Uh, but you can see four lines of tab here instead of three, and chord forms and all of that for GDAE tuned instruments. Now it's not just, I keep saying mandolin, mandolin, but it's not just mandolin. And to help prove that, I've got a few different instruments over here to my right. Can't see most of them at the moment, but uh, they're all tuned GDAE. They range in scale length from the shortest, which does happen to be a mandolin at 14 inch scale, up to the longest, which happens to be a cigar box guitar at 25 inch scale. Then what? You remember who built this cigar box guitar? It's going back a few days. GT Watt himself. I said, hey, I want a four stringer. Can you build me one? And, wow. and he did. Yeah. Um, that's not the song I intended to play, though. Let me get this little amplifier kicked up. So, jug a punch. Uh, the tablature is laid out here showing you where to put your finger on what string to play the notes you need to make up the song. This one, uh, I just plugged it into the amp to give it a little extra boost for the purposes of the show. So, one pleasant evening in the month of June, as I was sitting with my glass and spoon, a small bird sat on an ivy bush, and the song he sang was the jug of punch. And Toralo, ah, why not? Toralo, Toralo, Toralo. So what I was strumming there was more the melody plus chords arrangement. This is the basic melody here. I just happened to know from doing a lot of songbooks how to fill in those extra notes to give you that melody and chord strumming. So that's 25 inch scale four string cigar box guitar originally built probably to be a probably a DGBE yeah. back in those days. I thought Chicago tenor was the way to go for the, the four stringers. There's one option. Yeah, that was probably 2012. Yeah, yeah probably somewhere there. 12. 12 or 13, yeah. Going back many moons ago. Wow. All right, the next longest scale thing oops, is an interesting little instrument here. It looks like a conventional guitar, right? Except notice up top here, only four tuners. You might think, oh, is it a bass? No. It is a tenor guitar, a four-string tenor. Traditionally, these... I think were kind of designed to be tuned a bit lower, C, G, D, A. I figured out what strings to use on this for G, D, A, E tuning, so I can play that same thing. on the same frets, the same strings, to play the same tune, different instrument, right? Next longest scale length is probably, actually I think this is the same scale length at 23 inches, tenor, four string tenor banjo, built here in the Giddy Shops by uh, Dale Vigent and Farley Andreessen, or whatever her name would have been back then, but yes, by Farley and Dale, and tune GDAE. Exact same. Using the same tablature, same fingering. But wait, there's more. But wait! Next longest scale length is this goofy looking thing, octave mandolin, or kind of 
cross between an octave mandolin and an Irish bouzouki. Uh, four strings, G, D, A, E, but double courses of strings like a mandolin has. <laughs> <laughs> Next down the line is a cigar box octave mandolin I built several years back. But I'm not going to fall over. It's a long way down. Tom Petri says it sounds like you're getting ready for St. Patrick's Day. Well, you know, Tom, <laughs> turns out. St. Patrick's Day show coming up on, I believe, March 13th, a Friday. Oh, Friday the 13th. Ah, don't worry, what could go wrong? We got the <laughs> luck of the Irish with us. <laughs> show I swear. Uh, this is one of the instruments I was testing out string gauges on the other day. So these are new strings and still breaking in. Um, what's that leave? I think it just leaves the mando. The actual F style mandolin, my first real mandolin. Using one piece of tablature, one basic knowledge set of where to put your fingers and uh, what chords to play. You can play the same D chord using two fingers on all of these instruments, the same G chord, the same C chord. Some of them, like an F chord, you can play it one way on the mandolin, but it's really difficult, if not impossible, to reach the frets on the longer scale ones, so there's a little different variety of the F chord, so you learn a couple of different variations for the longer ones, and suddenly you can go out in public and give people the distinct impression that you are multi-instrumental, when really, you really just play one instrument <laughs> that has a few different looks and sounds. So, that is what I have to say about GDAE tuning this week. I've got 30 or so more songs to convert for this Irish pub favorites. It's going to be a combination of my St. Patrick's Day favorites and Irish drinking songs, songbooks that I did for the three string cigar box guitar. I'm combining those two together, adding in a couple of more songs uh, that weren't in either of them, and that should be available, I hope, in time for St. Patrick's Day if I stay diligently focused on the task at hand. Have hey! We, have we already mentioned? I'm sorry. No, hey. go ahead. Hey, Nick! No, Nick's Nick. watching. Hey, Nick! What, what you doing? <laughs> have we already mentioned the uh, fact that you... I'm sorry, did you already mention the fact that you have your book on Amazon? Go ahead, then. The mandolin book on Amazon? Oh, oh. No, it's a strip, but it's not a tablet. I apologize. It, I apologize. It, there is, I have my first mandolin songbook. It's more of a session strummer's songbook. It has the lyrics and chords and chord forms for this this tuning. It is available now on Amazon. I think, did you we, have it in the newsletter? We linked to it in the newsletter. Yeah, yep. it's in this week's Giddy newsletter. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, buddy. Yeah. Who else? Got anybody else out there? We got Dan. Oh, well. Today. Danny, who we got yeah, out there, buddy? Shaq yeah, Collins. this is going to become Shaq your duty. So. Bill Nolan. Now, what you yeah. don't know is that Shaq Collins hails from Shacksonville. Shacksonville, yeah. It's a one-man town. Yeah. <laughs> And we're doing good, Nick. Nick asks how we're doing. Oh, lots of buttons being mashed in a panic. Yeah, we got... Yeah, Nick's drinking a beer. I believe that. <laughs> I've seen him do it. There you go. Awesome. All right. Well, good. We're you're glad all of you are with us on this fine Friday. It's mostly sunny here in New Hampshire. It's not snowing. It's not too cold. It has cooled down a bit. We had a nice little warm spell. Mm -hmm. A lot of rain yesterday. Nothing, nothing yeah, like those folks in uh, those folk up in upstate New York. What they get? Yeah, like, I don't know. They were getting two to four inches an hour. Woo! Oh, that's some snow there, yeah. by. But 
our buddy uh, uh, Terry Mojo Johnson up, he lives up there in upstate New York. Um, all right, we got another video for you now. Another one from our good buddy Vern, a prolific videographer. Uh, we're always glad to see his uh, his uh, creations. It looks like a cigar box guitar and a hobo drum. I'm excited to see this. You don't realize that a lot of these videos we run are, are new to me, mostly through my own laziness of not watching them ahead of time. But All right, here we go. going to run over to the thing. Always you proud. Do some always proud to see Vern contribute to the show. And Vern, if you see this, I'm confident you will. Let's, uh, please continue to... To lighten it brightens everybody's day by sending us videos like this because these are this is another another terrific example of uh, what can be done at home. It's true. Yep. And who else we got watching? Here we go. <laughs> we got uh, Michael Brasseur. We're going. We're going. Oh. sending that in again it's all, always awesome to see the things that you are willing to record and contribute to the show and it's just always a pleasure to have your smile and your support uh, on the video airwaves for all of us to, to enjoy so thank you Vern and uh, so as you can probably figure out for yourself this is uh, Walk Corner this is uh, my last one um, swan song swan song but uh, so thank you very much for joining uh, us for this uh, this last edition, and first up, I have we have for you uh, a group of fine young gentlemen at a uh, high school just north of here. Uh, that our good man, our good friend Martin Tauber, uh, Wicked Bucket Winder, uh, newfound pro for uh, Maine, the state of Maine. And for those of you who aren't uh, who are out of the northeastern United States, Maine is a state, and it's uh, tucked up in the corner. It's got some really cool coastlines, and they're known for lobsters and stuff like that. Uh, well. Martin lives there, and uh, Marty winds Wicked Buckers, and Marty also does his best to uh, introduce people to handmade musical instruments, specifically cigar box guitars. He is the he is the sole individual who started the first Maine Cigar Box Guitar Festival last summer that we here at CBGD had the, the privilege and the honor and the pleasure to attend. Um, he's also got uh, he's involved with, although I'm, I'm not I don't want to credit too I don't know who to credit. Uh, but he's involved with a, an upcoming festival on the 25th of April, uh, again in Maine. It is a, uh, it's a show of sorts. I know there are live performers like uh, Fat Knuckle Freddy and Tom Doobie, but there are also vendors there like Marty and our good friend Burton Philbrick of Burt's Blues Boxes. But of the things that Martin does, he also helps or tries to get into uh, schools to introduce kids to handmade musical instruments. And... Uh, in no small amount of irony, stu uh, schools that are looking for uh, new programs or ways to keep uh, uh, students interested to, uh, and to introduce kids to uh, project-based learning and STEM or STEAM type programs. That's you know, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. If you put the A in there, it's STEAM. Uh, but Marty's been trying to, uh, diligently to get into different schools and you know, they, it's, there's a lot of roadblocks to doing such a thing. But he, he fortunately got into this one and uh, these are the students that build diddly bowls with Martin. And I'm particularly fond of the young gentleman who uh, has the, uh, for those of you who are closer to my age, the kind of metal pose as he's squatting down and making a face. He is actually the only student there that I see, think has a, hand, a a dowel that was cut off right for, you can see, you can't probably see, I can see it. It's got like a plastic handle. It's an old shovel handle, looks like, or some sort of an old handle. Uh, I think the rest of them have dowels that are likely store-bought, That's which is great, but um, that's uh, uh, good stuff. It's just, it's always a pleasure for all of us to see young people getting involved in doing something other than being on their phones. And, and if it's making musical instruments, I don't know that there's anything better. So making art that makes art, doing all the good things. So thank you very much, Martin, for not only sharing this picture with us, but for making the effort to get into schools and introduce kids to handmade musical instruments. So awesome stuff, awesome stuff. 
Next up, we got from Chris A. Chris A has got a couple of CB Giddy kits here. And uh, what he says about them, and just bear with me, I won't be reading too much today. I only got a few words from Chris A. He's re he writes, thanks to Giddy's easy to follow instructions and online help, I somehow avoided any major problems with my kits. Um, but for, uh, as an off note or side note, that's because Ben puts uh, hours and hours of effort into writing the most clear and concise instructions that go with our kits. And uh, that is why they go together as easily as they do, the time and the care that go into them. So it always makes me feel good to, to read those things that you submit. When you submit your photos and whatnot to the CB Giddy website, I see those, those, uh, those text submissions, and it's just a pleasure to read those. Um, and it's a pleasure to share that here, by the way. Uh, I braced the Big Easy kit, which I don't really can't remember which is left and right for you folks, but uh, it's uh, in this case it's the it's the lighter of the two, the lighter colored of the two. I braced the Big and Easy Big Easy kit with a, a three quarter by three quarter inch maple and added a four inch spring for reverb and placed fender washers between the neck and the box. And if you could see the photo better, or if you could see it as well as I could, he's got fender washers underneath the bridge as well to lift it up to make up the difference for those fender washers that he put underneath the neck and on top of the box that is to give that box top a little bit more room to vibrate so smart thinking on your part uh chris a he also installed a piezo pickup on this one and on the the darker of the two that is the tin pan alley resonator kit which i believe is uh the uh brainchild of nick lanciano yeah, buddy. there you go nick i hope you're still out there this is another one of your fine creations and of it chris a writes uh, in, the, in, the, in addition to the bracing, and he also put springs in this one, he actually put a, uh, a juke shack. It's one of these thin pickups. We put a juke shack pickup on the box as well. Thank you for switching the images. So you can see in here uh, the springs that uh, often people reference uh, Del Puckett for this, uh, and I don't blame him because that's he's also who I would reference for uh, installing springs in boxes. Not that he's the first, and he won't be the last, but there's a great tutorial on it. Uh, and as some of you know, that adds a reverb effect, kind of a, some sustain to the to an acoustic instrument. Instrument. And part of the reason I wanted to share Chris A's work is not only because he was kindly supporting us, but it's because he did awesome work. He did what these things that we constantly tell people, make these kits your own. These kits are very clear and straightforward, but they're blank slates. Do what you want with them. Make this instrument something that you're proud of. Not that you can't be proud of it otherwise to have built it just from the kit, but do what you want with it, man. It's all yours. And I'm really excited that Chris A did that exactly that with his. So great stuff, Chris A. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. Next up, we have from Dave, uh, a slightly different look. I love this thing. Uh, I've seen uh, Jimbo Bird do something similar with his tennis racket guitars inspired by Eric Denton. But uh, in this case, Dave has taken a cigar box guitar and embedded it in a body that he routed out of a piece of pine. So he's got that like telly body, uh, routed it out and put a cigar box guitar right into it. And I just think that's rad. He's got a bunch of giddy parts on there, the tuners. He's got this, the adjustable, uh, chrome adjustable six string bridge, the telly switch plate and the, the knobs there you can see. He's got a power bucker, power bucker, power bucker pickup in there as well. Uh, awesome stuff, Dave. I, um, he, he, anyways, I just, Love the fact, again, that you, people are just doing unique things to their instruments. And, and moreover, to be honest with you, that'll sit more, a little bit more nicely on a thigh when you're, uh, when you're seated and playing. So smart thinking, Dave. Next up, we got from Rick H. Uh, just a little picture of Rick. I, right, so, it's, so, no, no, no. It's all good. I, I love seeing guys with uh, people, women, men, and uh, everything in between, um, uh, sharing images of themselves with the uh, instruments that you, they build. And this is, he's got one here loaded with giddy parts. And... Uh, part of the reason I wanted to share is because he was just like, man, it took me 24 hours to build. He didn't say 24 hours like from 12 to 12, you know, day to day. It could be just a total accumulation of hours. But uh, it took him 24 hours to build, and he's just proud of it. And I, I don't blame him. I love seeing people hold their instruments and, and knowing that they, you know, that they're proud of them because we all should be proud of it. the art, in my opinion, the art that we create. Next up, we've got from Dave Linus. Speaking of art, Dave Linus. Some of you out there are like, oh, is this Glenn Watt guy going on about Dave Linus again? Yes, he is. This happens to be, uh, I've shared on a couple of uh, corner segments here, uh, Dave's, this particular guitar, the progression of it. I just wanted to, now that Dave's finished it, I wanted to share the last bit here. Here it is, the chicken headstock. Love it. He's got it all colored up. Uh, nicely, as some of you may already know, if you're on Cigar Box Nation, uh, he does, sometimes, often does these uh, alternating uh, colors, squares on the fretboards. He's a terrific artist. He's always got personality in all of his instruments. And if you go on the Nation on that front page, he's got tons of videos of him playing in their beautiful tunes, just him playing at his guitars. Next up, uh, or the next image, is actually the same guitar. Again, hand, uh, more art. It's hand-painted box. He's got a Marty Tauber Wicked, Bonder, Wicked Bucker 
hand wound pickup there, uh, you know, underneath the strings. And then in the next image you'll see peeking out of that sound hole, another little hand done. I can't, honestly, I don't remember if it's ceramic or wood, but uh, he's got a little hand done roost uh, chicken head um, uh, peeking out of that sound hole. And it's just that final touch that, I mean, if the headstock wasn't enough, if the hand painted box wasn't enough, he's got that little extra touch, you know, peeking out of the sound hole. And it's outstanding work. So thank you very much, Dave. My goodness gracious, dude, I'm always, uh, it's always been a pleasure to, to see the work you do, and I can't wait to, to see the, what, what you come up with next, so awesome stuff. Uh, next up, we got Dennis Hansen. Hansen, excuse me. Dennis was uh, just proud to share his very first cigar box guitar, and uh, I'm proud to have you on the show here uh, in this segment, because I love seeing, again, people holding the instruments that they are rightly proud of, and uh, for whatever it's worth, Dennis, I... Uh, I love your guitar. I, I love. I would wish he had posted a video of it, but um, and De Dennis, if, uh, he shared this with us on Facebook. But more often than not, we get them shared to our CB to the site cbgiddy.com. When you buy parts from us, you're going to get an email saying, "Would you please kindly consider sharing photographs and videos and kind words if you have them to our website?" Because we appreciate that. And then if you do, we put them on the website and sometimes a newsletter, sometimes here on the show and. It's always it's 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 a win-win for everybody. Everybody gets a little love, so it's good stuff. Thank you very much for sharing that with us, Dennis. Next up, we have from the Friends of Giddy Facebook group. If you're not part of it, why not? Come on now. This is S. E. Grace. I love this ukulele that she built, and she built it from a CB Giddy kit. This is a Giddy Lele, and again, taking a kit and making it your own. I can't stress that enough. And she's done a terrific job of it. So then, then to, to 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 as as to add weight to, I can, words are, t are tough for me. In the next image, what you'll see is what she has for the, and I'll, I'll continue stalling here, uh, images and <laughs> images and cool stuff. Hey, look at that. <laughs> no, I, I was looking at you and I didn't even think to keep talking. Keep talking, Glenn Watt. Um, it's got a little battery compartment there. As you can see, she mounted on, that doesn't come with the kit. That's something that she came up with. Uh, put a little battery compartment tray on the side of the, although you can get battery compartment trays from us. This one happens to hook up right to a, a little light. Because in the next image you'll, you'll see is a dark room, but a lit sound hole, an illuminated sound hole. And I love the fact that you did that, SC. Not only is that ukulele, that giddy lele, that ukulele that is yours now, uh, not only is it a special work of art, but it's got those kind of added touches that make me smile. And I hope for all that's good in this world, that you watching this now, that you watching this now are smiling too, because that is some great stuff. Uh, next up, got a little picture here from Shane, and I'm going to murder your last name. Mikalaga. 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 Uh, he and his brother, I have noticed, are on Facebook, and you know, they're, I see them quietly doing their thing. Uh, they're not in the Friends of Giddy group. I'd love to see you there. Um, but they quietly do their thing, and they quietly share their love for these handmade musical instruments. I've seen the, I see you guys out there supporting CB Giddy in your own way, and I, I saw this picture, and I just wanted to make sure that, I, that we got an opportunity to share it. Uh, it's always good to see. It's because here's the deal. Because playing your instrument for people, which I am guilty of not doing. So I just want to get that out there. Uh, there there's some context for you. I'm a hypocrite. Um, but to see people share, to sharing their instruments by playing them publicly is so inspiring to me. Because that's you can, you can post pictures all day long and try to convince people, let's say, if you're, if you're selling them, hey, my, look at my guitars, they're cool, and they are. But until people see you playing them, until people see you enjoying them, even if it's not live, if it's through video, that's when the bells start ringing. That's when the connections are made. And to, 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 for the, those of you who are somehow involved in marketing or have been, you probably understand this idea that some often times, not everyone buys the drill bit. Like they're not really interested in the drill bit, the specs of the drill bit, how fancy the drill bit is, what you made the drill bit out of, how many fast the drill bit turns. What people are interested in is the hole the drill bit makes. So when I go to buy a drill bit, I don't care about all the, the stats. I care about the hole the drill bit's gonna make. And that's the kind of what playing your guitars for people publicly are, are, is doing. Like you can convince, you can try to convince somebody how good your guitars are by, by showing them this thing but until you start playing them and they see the enjoyment that you have and they hear how it sounds, uh, that's, that's the proof. That's the hole. That's the hole the drill bit makes. So if you're, if you're anything like Shane, you're getting out there and you're showing, you're showing the world what, what your guitars can do, and I think that's really awesome. And I think it's last up. Tom, if you're still with us, Tom Schaefer built himself a nice little uh, lap steel. I love this thing. Um, it's a, out of a Jack Daniels 10. There you can see the full picture of it. 
Uh, and the next picture, what you'll see is that uh, he used a, uh, excuse me, a giddy, forgive me, excuse me, a CB giddy pre-wound uh, magnetic pickup, four pole pickup. Uh, and he actually said this is the third build that he's used that same pickup in. I know that feeling. I have taken pickups and tuners and whatnot off of mul endless builds and rebuilt with them. I have trashed so many builds or taken apart so many builds it, for no other reason, just because that's it works for me. And so he's he's thinking hopefully this is this third time to charm for this lap steel because it's a great looking guitar. By the way, I, again, this is another example of that that uh, what do you call it? Uh, the Come on, Glenn. The jack plate, the uh, recessed jack plate. But if you turn it over, it's kind of like a, it's not a recessed, it's a prolapsed. Uh, it's not recessed anymore. When you turn it around, you can kind of plug it in that way. It's, it looks good. It's so that you don't have to make room in the box for it. No, no, so it works that way. I can't think of the word. I, I can't. No, I'm word trying to think of the two. I can't come up with his obtuse. Uh, I don't think that's right. But part of the reason that uh, also I wanted to share this because in the theme of this Jack Daniels tin is that Tom took a cocktail strainer, took the spring, took the cocktail strainer and used it as a tailpiece, but took the spring that you can't see, took the spring from a cocktail strainer and mounted it in the box for reverb, again, to call back to Tom uh, Dave's builds earlier on the walk corner. Uh, and that's just as... It, that's some heady stuff. I just love that sort of ingenuity. And the next image, what you'll see, speaking of uh, heady stuff and just being kind of clever, is that on the volume and tone, uh, the bottle caps there are Cokes, Coke caps. So to keep in line with like that Jack and Coke thing, uh, the, just clever stuff or a brand name in particular, but uh, that you kept with the theme and something that's you know that that you like is uh, really awesome stuff. And I'm glad that you shared it with us. So thank you very much, Tom. Now, last up, um, some of you, maybe all of you, have that realization when they feel that joy, when they see that spark, like that's when it all clicks for you. And and this, when you, especially when you're doing it with kids. And this uh, the gentleman that uh, submitted this or sent this picture to us, K W. I will refer to him as. Uh, built this with his grandson. And uh, he used a, a CB Giddy kit, as it turns out, and they 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 uh, they uh, customized it for uh, their their personal tastes. Um, but that he spent time with somebody that he loves, uh, creating memories, and not just creating an instrument, but creating memories, and then you know being able to capture that smile of his grandson. That's uh, that's not something he's going to forget anytime soon. And I, I think that's a, a hefty reason why we all build and play because it, it brings joy to other people as well sometimes more importantly but in any event that has been da da dun 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 da 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 what corner what corner um i just want to quickly say hello uh to the people out there on youtube um give me just a second too many buttons to mash here um we got gary desrosiers out there pierced arrow 57 who has been so diligent in leaving wonderfully nice comments on so many of the videos that Glenn has posted on YouTube from the show and elsewhere. Uh, Paul Robertson, Greg Tiffany, Lenny Harp, we appreciate all of you tuning in to watch the show on YouTube each week. Uh, Kim Starling has entered the room. I'm going to head back to the stage now. So, yeah. so it's good to see Louis LeMann, by the way. It's good to see you, brother, and those withdrawals will end quickly. I'm sure of it, Brian. Uh, Shaq Collins, Kurt Gardner, Jimbo Burr, I've seen all of you now, come on now. Who else we got? A Rusty Taylor, a blister. Good to see y'all. Thank you for tuning in. I left the script up there. I'm gonna drive a truck, <laughs> I'm gonna drive a truck through this space. <laughs> oh, we got another video. Pornus Studios, that's what's happening. Okay, this you you likely have seen this either on Cigar Box Nation and perhaps in the CB Getting newsletter, but we it was so important to share it here as well because there's four different homemade instruments that uh, Porn Studios uses in this superbly edited video, and it's a white striped song, so it has that rough and ready feel that is so awesome for homemade instruments. I hope that you enjoy it, because I, goodness knows, I did.
we go. <laughs> thank you very much. I thank you for, by the way, just people have been very kind. So I, uh, I don't want to make a long, I'm not one for production, so I just not, thank you. Ah, don't break things. <laughs> instrument from this valley they say you are leaving we will miss your bright eyes and sweet smile for they say you are taking the sunshine our pathway a while. So come sit by my side if you love me. Do not hasten to bid me adieu. Just remember One more song and then we'll be done for this week. We hope to see you again. It's all he can take. Hope to see you. I barely made it through that. Yeah. Hope to see you again next week here on the Giddy Gang Show. Uh, next week. Who knows where the hell this one starts? This is all you, boo. Oh, of all the money that here I've spent, I spent it in good company. And of all the harm that e'er I've done, alas, it was to none but me. And all I've done for want of wit to memory now I can't recall. So And joy be with you all. Oh, of all the money the tear I've spent. I already did this verse, I'll do the next one now. <laughs> oh, of all the comrades the tear I've had. They were sorry for my going away. And of all the sweethearts the tear I've had. They would wish me one more day to stay. But since it falls unto my lot that I should rise and you should not, I'll gently rise and I'll softly call. Good night and joy be with you all. There you go. Happy trails, Glenn Watt. <laughs> Happy trails to you. To you. Now who stops Until the thing? Until we meet again. <laughs> And to all of you, happy trails as well. Until oh, we yeah. meet again, I'll right. see okay. you again soon. Come on now. Happy guys. Come on now. I don't have it. All right, you take that. You know how to I don't know what show. the hell's happening. Come on now. Here we go.
Oh, wait, no, better not smash the mandolin. All right, smash thanks again, folks. Smash the mandolin all the time. I don't know how to fade it to black. How about that? <laughs> <laughs>